Hey, what's going on, guys? It's a Friday night, about 9 o'clock, and I'm out here in the garage working on my Dana 60 junkyard build. What I'm doing today is going to be mocking up and fitting parts to it, and as you can see, I've already got my shave kit installed. The bottom has been shaved, and if you're wondering what that is, I have a whole video I'll link down below explaining that and why you would do it. But what I had to do was I made a nice jig to put this thing up in the bridge port. I went and I originally started with a fly cutter to try and cut the bottom down, but that was slow going, so I ended up swapping to a three quarter inch end mill. That was a bit quicker going and uh, worked through it, and it came out perfect. I'll show you guys from the sides here, but it was really nice, the angles were tight, and uh, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Now the only thing left to do on that is weld it up. What I'll be doing today is fitting this Barnes four-wheel drive truss on the top. As you can see, this is a full width truss. It was meant for an axle that you're going to uh, be four linking, and that's why it's so long. There's nice spots here to mount your bracketry. But that is not what I have in my diesel Bronco. What I have is leaf springs. And as you can see, my perches are covered up. So what I will be doing today is narrowing this truss a little bit. This mount here, I'm going to move in to mount inward of the spring mount. And the same thing on this side, I'll move this side in. So that's going to be my project today. And once I narrow this down, I also have all this laser cut bracketry underneath that I want to be installing in here. That goes about there. That'll weld onto the axle. And it should make it pretty strong for uh, the heavy truck that I'm going to have on top of it. I haven't had any issues with my Dana 60. However, this kit was about 130 bucks. And if I'm gonna be doing all this welding on the axle anyway, I thought this would be the perfect time to install a truss. Let's get cutting. We'll start with cutting this upside up, moving it in. We'll move to this side next. And we'll go from there. So here is my leaf spring perch. And I marked out my two spots where I'm gonna be cutting this and removing this portion here. So this should bring this end in quite a bit. And uh, I'll weld it back into place. All right, guys. So I cut out this piece in here. And now what I've done is beveled the edge on the top and the bottom. So when I weld, there's room for my weld to go in here. And it'll hopefully make this pretty strong, even though I just cut it. And then I just got a clamp holding it all together and a piece of plate. So it should be nice and flat. I check the edges, make sure everything lines up. And I'm just going to give this a couple tacks for the time being. And then we'll move on to fitting it and cutting the other side. All right, got a couple tacks laid on there. We still have our mounting hole for our uh, laser cut piece. Let's go test fit it on the axle and then move on to the other side. So on our initial test fit here, it looks like I made this just a little too long. I don't think I'm gonna have room for a U-bolt to come up through here. So maybe I'll break this apart and cut it down a little bit more. I'm not quite sure. So I don't think I can move this over much more. Let me, uh, let me play with it and get back to you guys. So the truss is back in the saw. We're gonna be moving it, it was about here. We're gonna be moving it over about an inch to roughly here is the only thing where I marked out. Just so I have enough room to get my U-bolts in. Don't wanna go weld that thing on and then not be able to go bolt the axle in. So we're moving along. This has been moved in, so we have enough room for our U-bolts. I've cut this side, and what I'm going to do over here is make a plate that comes in here, and then one that kind of drops down here. Make it one piece, but uh, that's how I'm gonna box this in, because you also have to leave room on this side for the U-bolts here. But before I do that, I'm gonna get this side figured out, because this is like the side I know most about. So, I've got this piece here that's going to go in right there. However, it's too long. So, I went and I put it in there. I marked it out. And that is our cut line to go and make it fit into here. So, I'm just going to go cut this with the angle grinder. And then we're going to test fit it. If that works, I'll cut that one too. It's getting late out here. We're creeping up at 1 a.m. I am realizing that a Dana 60 from a Super Duty and a Dana 60 from a Leaf Spring 
OBS truck are slightly different in the casting area. So I've been doing some trimming to make these fit. And uh, it's the other side down there trimmed. I think we'll tack this thing together and see how it fits up and kind of go from there. I think there's gonna be a few gaps here and there I gotta fill in, but uh, for the most part, I think it's something I can work with. We're all tacked together. We're having a refreshing adult beverage and I'm test fitting and the breather was in the way. So I just uh, taking this out, snapped the top off. But uh, yeah, we'll see how this thing looks and we're gonna go from there. The breather's gonna have to be relocated a little bit. They'll go up and over a pinch, but I mean, it's probably backed out. It's not a big deal. And here is our initial test fit. It looks like this part could go down a little bit lower and that's probably due to making contact up top. So if I clearance is just a little bit, the, you know, the actual truss and drop it down, that might be good. Or just maybe the way I'm looking at it. I'll put a level on it, see if it's a level. We'll go around the back here. That looks like it's pretty high up in the air though here. So we'll have to poke with that a little bit. But uh, not too bad from going to not really fitting to uh, starting to shape up a little bit. Let's keep going. Giving this a second look, if I clearance this out, this will drop it down a little bit more too. And uh, yeah, we'll start looking a little bit better. So I might get to that. I got a little clearance here too. Or uh, I might be getting to bed soon. I have no idea. We'll see how this goes. So it's Saturday, back out here in the garage, and I'm back to working on the truss. So over here, I'm pretty much happy with how things are lining up. There's some gaps, but I mean, everything should be able to be filled with weld. I trimmed up a piece over here, put that in. What I'm about to do is make a little cardboard template, and I want a piece that drops down here, and then a larger one that goes down to the bottom all made out of whatever this is, uh, quarter inch or whatnot, pretty beefy stuff. The only thing I'm really not liking is the back here. Kind of, you know, like I said, this was built for a different axle and I'm not really liking how it lines up. So what I'm thinking about doing is removing this piece here. It's because it's just in a way and it's not really fitting well. And I was going to make a new piece that goes in and just butts up right against this wall here and steps in. So then I can put my breather if I want to, I can run it through this loop. I still have to think about where my ARB's fitting's going up top, but that's something for another day. But uh, yeah, cut this all out here. It's because it's only tacked in, maybe to here. And you go make a new one that's just a little bit further in that fits this better. And then I can weld it in and uh, I think this thing will be pretty, pretty beefy. I'll be pretty happy with it. But first things first, I think I'm going to go and make this little piece here. And what I need to remember to do, is I can't really get too much further over than this because the U-bolts go right through here. I don't want to interfere. So I think I'm just gonna get a piece that goes straight down, make a little template, tack it in there, and then we'll go from there. Then we'll remove all this and uh, make something cool. And I think we'll be ending our mock-up. So after that, I mean, we gotta clean up this axle and then start getting it welded on. Other parts that I wanna do, I wanna make a little skid for my steering here. Something, you know, kinda of goes under here, so I stop bending up my steering. And I wanna machine one of these out because I keep elongating these holes on this spring perch. This one's cast and holds up a lot better. This one I've already replaced once on my diesel Bronco. And even with keeping the U-bolts tight, it just like walks and elongates, so. I think replacing one of these would be cool. And then I might have the ultimate Junkyard Dana 60. I'll give you another peek at that shave kit underneath. But enough of that. Let's get to finishing up this truss mock-up. So this is what we needed. And with a little bit of CAD, I've got a template. And that is cardboard-aided design. So uh, let me go cut this out. And the only thing I'm going to probably need to do is do some grinding to make sure it fits in there nice and square. But uh, I think this will be a cool little end of our truss. Let's get a transfer and cut.
All right, so we cut this thing out. I did a little bit of grinding for uh, fitment. And let's check and see how it uh, looks. Pretty, uh, pretty solid there. Then we'll grind a little bit off of here just so I get a little bit more penetration with my weld. But uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll have to get some more video once it's tacked into place. The gloves block a lot and it's too hot for me to touch. So, Oof. Got my piece on there. Got some nice room around it for a weld. And I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing I wish I would have done different, I'll point with my knife because it's hot in there. So I wish I made this a little longer, but I think you're gonna lose that anyway with the weld, so I'll take it. With that being said though, uh, I think the front of this is pretty much mocked up. I do want to go around the back though, and I want to replace, like I said, you know, this part over. Make something that fits a little bit better. And then I can tie it in back here, and it should be uh, pretty cool. So I think we'll pull this off, give this a few tacks in here just to make sure it doesn't move, and then uh, get another piece of cardboard and make one of these. You can really tell that it's not right. The castings have changed a lot over the years. So, I made this little template up, and that's how I'm going to fix that. I'm about to go cut this out. A little bit more uh, CAD, cardboard aided design, this time out of a PBR box. But now we'll fit this a lot better, get a lot more weld on, and it'll work out pretty good. And you can see this is like sitting on top of the breather now. What I'm going to be doing is pushing it all the way in until this rib is here. I weld it a little bit deeper in so then I have full access to the breather still. So, with that being said, I went and I traced this template out, I made this. And then if you go over here, I've traced it on this piece of steel I found. So I'm about to get the plasma cutter fired up and we're gonna get the cutting. Here's our finished product. I'm going to take the truss off the axle, fit this thing up, and then, uh, you know, do some grinding and final fitment and clean up. But I think that looks pretty close to our template. We're not too far off, but I need to open up right here a little bit more. So uh, fire up the plasma cutter again and try that. All right, so I got my new piece uh, pretty much fitted up. I'm gonna do a little finish grinding and uh, clean it up and everything. Before I get to that, I kind of want to test fit it with the truss. So, just took a angle grinder, cut that here. I'm gonna take the section out, and I don't know what I'm doing over here. If I want to go weld this all up to the new piece, or if I want to notch it here and just lap over here, not quite sure yet. But let's get that piece out of there. After more time than I'd like to admit, I've gotten this thing fit up. So, nice gaps all the way around. Had to grind the front because uh, the casting's curved in the corners. So we kept wanting to raise it up. But now we clear the breather hole. And we'll go throw on the top and see how this thing fits. Finally all mocked up. Took a while just to get everything test fitted and everything. But uh, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. Just stuck this piece in here now just to get a look at it. And I think I might lay a plate kind of behind here, like a square plate or rectangular plate, just so this gap's not so big here when I'm welding. But these gaps all came out pretty nice underneath there. So that'll be nice to weld up. Same with around here. And now let's look at the back. You can see on the inside there, a little bit of shadow, but this plate's right up against the back of the uh, casting. And then there's our plate in there that we've been working on. So this gap's a little bigger than expected, but that's all right. It's kind of a weird spot to get around this wedding. And these gaps are nice here too, to weld on. So 
Overall, pretty happy. I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, I got two tacks on here, I need a break to get the whole thing off. And then maybe, I don't know, I'll tack this over here and maybe cut it off there and bend this in and tie that all together. And I'm thinking I'm gonna weld this whole thing up maybe. Well, if not now, eventually, but I might do it tonight. I think that'd be a fun way to spend the rest of uh, January 1st. So let's see how it goes. So I think that's where I'm going to wrap it up today, guys. All I need to do is pull this thing off, weld up the truss, and then we'll be going forward with our next steps. Like I said, I'm going to go replace this with a machine piece because I don't want to elongate this hole. And then maybe the next video will be putting a, uh, hopefully some kind of slider or something in for my steering. If you guys enjoyed and you want to continue to follow along, be sure to subscribe and have a good one. Thanks for watching.